Hey guys, check this out. This Blue Eddy has super fast dual charging, 391 watts of input from dual input. Stick around to see how. Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be taking a look at the EB55 portable solar generator or backup power supply that I have here. Now this thing is pretty amazing how fast it charges in my opinion. You can hook up dual charging to this thing and charge either via solar panels. You could charge with solar panels and an AC adapter at the same time, or you can charge with two AC adapters at the same time for up to 400 watts of input, which is pretty amazing. So now if you have this thing out camping and you have it hooked to solar panels and it's later in the day like it is today, right now I have it hooked to two 100 watt Opez solar panels and I'm inputting about 46 watts currently into this unit. Now it was just inputting 70 some, so that sun must be going down a little bit, but good example here. If you're not getting quite the power that you need to charge this thing and you want it to charge up quickly, I'll show you a few different ways you can do that by hooking up to an AC adapter. And I know you guys are gonna say, well, if I'm out camping with solar, I obviously I don't have any power. Well, you are gonna need some other things for that and in my example here i'm going to use a small 800 watt portable inverter generator to run the uh, blue eddy ac adapter and then i'm also going to hook up my opez ac adapter that i use for my opez 1200 and i'm going to plug it in here at the same time with the blue eddy one and we'll see what kind of wattage we can get now i'm not able to get the full max watt into this portable power station with these solar panels it will accept 200 watts of input However, it needs a higher voltage than what I have because it is limited at eight amps of input. So you're gonna need something like the Blue Eddy PV200 solar panel to get the max wattage into this thing at full sun power because it does put out a higher voltage on that panel. And like I said, this thing is limited to eight amps. So you could do up to 200 watts of solar input and up to 200 watts of AC input at the same time. So let's get into the testing. So I have the solar panels connected to it currently it's only getting 30 watts of input and you could see on the left hand side you have a mppt controller you can hook 12 to 28 volts at 8 amp max into that and then your ac wall adapter from 25 to 28 volts at 10 amps now i don't know if you can hook solar into this port or not i kind of don't want to try it and mess anything up but it does say 25 to 28 volts and these panels parallel together does not put out that voltage. So I'm not gonna try that, but I'm gonna hook the wall charger up to this with the solar input and see what kind of power we can get. All right guys, so here we go. I have the wall charger plugged into the generator and we're gonna go ahead and plug it in here. I'm getting 27 watts from solar and now I'm getting 231 watts. I've noticed that just with this ac charger i usually get about 205 watts when i'm charging this so i'm getting about 205 from this and another 26 from solar so that ought to charge it pretty quickly and if this was a bright sunny day that should be up in the 300 and some watt range because i usually get 100 and some watts out of these panels when they're paralleled together into this unit when the sun's high in the sky and no clouds so i'm going to go ahead unplug the solar now And you can see it dropped to about 203 watts of input because I just disconnected the solar. All right, now I'm gonna plug my Opez adapter into the solar port on here and we're gonna see what kind of dual input we can get. Now Blue Eddy does sell another one of these wall adapters with the connector that you need to plug it directly in so that you could use two of those. I believe it's somewhere around $125. However, I don't have a second one of those. That's why I'm using the Opez one that I have. So we're gonna see how much input right now 203 watts i just heard the generator ramp up a little bit 373 390 391 so 391 watts of input guys using these two wall adapters now like i said i could either do solar and one wall adapter or two wall adapters, whatever I need. So just in about one to two hours, I can have this thing completely charged up to 537 watt hours of capacity, and then I can use it to run my portable refrigerator freezer. But it's a really nice option to have on shady days or if that sun doesn't come out and you need to charge this thing up quickly. And what's nice is that inverter generator right there is really pretty easy on gas. So it should barely take anything to charge this thing up. 
All right, so now let's check out some of the specs and features of the EB55 portable solar power station. So up here on top you have a wireless pad for charging devices. It's a 15 watt wireless output charger. All you got to do is line it up with that circle and it will start charging your device. So over here on the right you have a marine 12 volt plug here or cigarette letter plug as everyone calls them. Two 5521 ports with a max output of 10 amps. You have four AC outputs with two that have grounding holes and two that don't. However, keep in mind, anytime you get these um, pure Synwave uh, portable inverter power stations, typically, even though there's a hole there, there is no grounding prong. So I haven't seen a problem at all using anything other than if you try to use something that's like a touch. Uh, like I have a heater that has just touch controls. You just touch it and it works. And those controls don't work because that is not grounded. But none of these power stations that I have tested has an actual ground on the plug. This is a 700 watt pure Synwave inverter in this generator with a peak output of 1400 watts. We will be testing that later. And then below that you have four USB-A 5 volt 3 amp ports and a USB-C 100 watt output. Now this is not an input. That would have been nice if this was dual input and output to allow you to charge from that. However, it is just an output, but it is very nice that it is a 100 watt output and we'll be testing that with my MacBook Pro. It has a nice flip down handle that is flush with the top, so it'd be real nice for setting devices on there to charge or for setting something else on there. No handle sticking up, so really nice feature there. And in the back of this thing, it has a really nice light in the back. It has a low mode, a high mode, and an SOS mode. Really nice diffused light there, really lights up a pretty good amount of area. Love seeing lights built into these things, because especially when you're using them for camping. And then last but not least, up here on the display, you have your input watts, you have your output watts, and then you have your battery meter over here in 20% increments from 20 to 100%. Now, that would have been nice to see a actual percentage display because I like when it reads down to the percent, not just in 20% increments. I like when it's more accurate than that. So hopefully maybe they can update that in the future because I've even seen a percentage display on some of my cheaper models, but it's definitely not a 100% deciding factor on this. I think the main selling point for me on this would be the dual charging input in the super fast charging and like i said that's going to be really nice on cloudy days or on days where you just have to get this thing up really fast so that you can hook it back up to your freezer or your other devices and keep them running or charged then obviously on the ends it has a fan that blows through to keep everything cool and then on the bottom it tells you all the specs about it and one other really awesome thing about this is it's lithium iron phosphate technology on the battery so that battery is going to get a massive 2500 recharge cycles and still maintain 80 percent of its capacity so it's going to last you a really long time and they're way safer than lithium ion batteries all right so the first test i'm going to do with this is i'm going to try to run max power at 700 watts for five minutes with this electric fireplace and some led lights and i'm only going to put it on low because this thing draws about 1200 watts on high so i'm going to go ahead and kick it on and it's using 660 watts shows 640 on the kilowatt meter 660 on the blue eddy so i got a timer going now we're going to kick on one of my led video lights until we hit that 700 watt mark and see how long it'll run for all right so we got it right at about 700 watts and this is the fan running So pretty loud on the fan when it's running at 700 watts. This thing does peak out at 1400 watts if you need it for a, st a quick start on something. But we're gonna let this go for about five minutes and see if it can maintain 700 watts. And I'm also tracking the kilowatt hours here. So we're gonna run this battery down and see how much capacity this thing has because it's rated for 537 watt hours. And it's maintaining 113 volts. 60 hertz, 676 watts on the kilowatt meter and 701 on the Blue Eddy. So seems like it's overestimating just slightly here versus what the kilowatt meter reads. 
We are at four minutes and 49 seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and bump this up until the kilowatt meter hits 700 watts. See if it can maintain that. All right, so I got the kilowatt meter at right over 700 watts, 737 watts on the Blue Eddy, and that's been going for a minute. We are at six minutes into this test. So yeah, guys, ran 700 watts, no problem, for a good six minutes and still running it fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and shut these LED lights down. I'm gonna hit the max uh, button here on this fireplace and see if the protection kicks off on this. Gonna kick it this on high and it overloaded it. So right off the bat, it threw an overload no issues at all that's what it's supposed to do so good job blue eddie and let's make sure everything comes back on yep no issues at all all right so now i got my other portable solar stations recharging off the blue eddie it's drawing or using 300 watts from the blue eddie and on the kilowatt meter it's showing 305 watts so really close now so maybe the fireplace had something to do with it being off slightly or at higher wattage, but it's pretty close and accurate now. So we're gonna let this run for a while, charging these up and see how many kilowatt hours we get out of this unit exactly. I'm down to 80% and we used 140 watt hours so far. All right, now the Blue Eddy is completely dead and I used 440 watt hours of power of the 537 watt hours that it's rated. So that's just about 82% efficient, which is pretty much on par with most of my other solar generators as far as capacity. So that's the efficiency out of the AC inverter. I don't currently have a way to test the DC output, but in theory, you should get more output out of the DC because there won't be so much of a loss in the conversion from DC to AC. All right, so I got the Blue Eddy charged back up. I'm charging my MacBook Pro using the 100 watt output USB-C port and I'm able to get 93 watts from this unit into my MacBook and shows that my MacBook will be charged in one hour and 31 minutes. On my meter here it's showing 95 watts output. So right around 95 watts was the most I was able to get out of that but really nice that it has a 100 watt USB-C output. And another thing I want to mention is that I was using the 12 volt output to run my Iceco refrigerator my portable refrigerator and it ran it perfectly but when you get this thing it will come in eco mode and you have to press the power button and the dc button for a few seconds to get into the menu to take that eco mode off there will be a little eco up here in the top corner of your screen when whenever you get it you want to make sure if you're running a portable refrigerator you do turn that eco mode off because it will shut the DC outputs off after about three and a half hours and it will shut your AC inverter off after an hour to save energy because it does draw the battery down if you're not using it and the AC inverter is on. So keep that in mind. If you're not using the AC inverter, make sure it's turned off. And if you're powering a portable refrigerator, make sure you have that eco mode off so that it powers it continuously and doesn't shut the outputs off on your unit. And the last thing I wanna mention is when this Blue Eddy is charging, it is very quiet and the fans are very minimal unless you have a full 400 watts of input in then the fans do kick on sporadically but the charging brick does have a fan in it that's pretty loud and it runs constantly no matter if you're using it to charge your device or not so if you're charging this at night and you're trying to sleep it's probably going to be a little bit loud i'll turn the ac outlets on though and show you exactly how loud this thing is though so you can hear the fan pretty loud and like I said I don't even have it plugged in running anything now one thing about that fan is this charger does stay nice and cool some of my other chargers like my Ops gets very hot and all my e-bike chargers that don't have fans in them they get very hot this one stays really nice and cool so that is one good thing it is a little bit louder as a trade-off but it does stay nice and cool now I'm gonna show you that it does have pass-through charging I'm gonna plug the Blue Eddy charger in And it's going to start charging this thing while it's running the brick. <laughs> so there you go. It's 191 watts of input, 315 watts of output. So I'm using the Blue Eddy to run the brick and recharge itself. So that confirms the pass-through charging. 
So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you learned everything you need to know about the EB55. If you want to see more information about this or pick one up for yourself, I'll leave an affiliate link down below in the description of this video. If you guys do use that link, it will help support the channel. And if you guys have any questions, please make sure you leave them below as well. And leave a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Please make sure you guys stick around. I got a lot of cool videos coming up like this in the future. And I will definitely see you guys around on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.